A young boy, Reiki's whole family was killed by a Yoma, demon, so a claymore, half-demon, half-human hybrid, is hired to kill the Yoma. Reiki interacts with the claymore when she arrives. Reiki later goes to his uncle's house and is met by the Yoma, who had taken the form of his brother, but is subsequently saved by the claymore. After the attack, Reiki is banished from the village by the frightened villagers and left to die in the deserts before he is saved by a claymore, and subsequently attacked by another Yoma when he goes searching for her, believing her to be the one who saved him from the first. After the Yoma attacks him, the claymore who saved him before does so again, and as she leaves, she gives him permission to join her in her travels as a cook, along with her name, Claire. Claire receives a black card from mysterious man who seems to be working with the organization she works for. Reiki witnesses as Claire confronts another claymore named Elena. Claire explains that when claymores use too much Yoma power, they eventually succumb to the influence of their Yoma half. Once this occurs, claymores, knowing they will have to die, often make the choice of dying with human hearts. So as they feel their humanity beginning to slip away they send a black card bearing their individualized insignia to the claymore that they want to be slain by. Claire's closest friend, Elena, was on the verge of succumbing to her demonic nature and becoming a Yoma, a process called, awakening. Despite Reiki's protests, Claire slays Elena, granting her the solace of dying as a human. Claire is hired to kill a, voracious eater, in a holy city where claymores are not allowed. Forced to use a special drug to disguise her claymore-specific characteristics, she has difficulty sensing where the Yoma is hiding. She poses as a human in order to infiltrate the church and meet her organization's client. At night, she makes her way to the church again and is caught fighting two suspicious knights, but escapes. The next day, the same two knights barge into the inn room she and Reiki are staying at and accuse her of being a claymore. Reiki comes to her defense saying he believes that she is more kind than anyone and doesn't deserve being accused as a monster. After the two knights leave when they find no proof of Claire being a claymore, she tells him to give up searching for kindness within her as he will ultimately end up disappointed. At night, she goes back into the church to look for the voracious eater, but the two knights interfere and when it shows up they only complicate the fight between it and Claire. Ultimately, as it is about to kill them, Claire does everything she can to protect them, including jump into the path of its deadly claws. Claire comes close to awakening when she uses too much of her yoki, demon energy, in the battle against the Yoma, the voracious eater. She intends to commit suicide before her awakening is complete in order to find peace through dying while she is still human, but Reiki pleads and begs her not to do it, saying that him meeting her was the best thing to happen to him. His pleas halt Claire's awakening transformation, and one of the two knights fighting in the battle later gives Reiki a sword in appreciation for what he and Claire have done for them while the other wishes for Reiki to grow strong. This is the beginning of a flashback arc. Teresa, the most powerful claymore of her era, is hired to kill a group of six Yoma in a village, and easily kills them, and one extra, who is one that had been abusing a young, human, and mute Claire. Since she has no one else to care for her, Claire follows Teresa through the wilderness, despite Teresa's best efforts to abandon her until Teresa decides to accept taking Claire under her wing. Teresa and Claire approach the next small town, and Claire still refuses to leave Teresa. In the forest at night, the bandit whose hand she cut off the last time they met returns and tries to rape Teresa, but Claire hits him with a thick branch, infuriating him. He begins to stomp on Claire, angering Teresa and making her threaten him while assuring him that while his knowledge about the rule prohibiting claymores to kill humans is not misinformed, her choice to obey that rule is entirely her own. He flees at her warning, and Claire cries because she feels sorry for Teresa whom Claire says, always looks to be in so much pain even when she's wearing her smile. This deeply moves Teresa. When they arrive in the village and Teresa complete another job, she asks the head of the village to give Claire a home and a caretaker, but Claire refuses with pleas and tears, but Teresa leaves anyway with an unspoken apology and a wish that Claire will grow up a human, live a human life and die a human. Not long after, Teresa sees a troop of bandits on their way to the village she just left, and heads back to find the entire village enraged. When she sees Claire is in danger, she kills every one of the bandits. 
A hooded figure working for the organization watches, and soon after organizes a group of Claymore to execute her. After Teresa escapes the initial execution attempt, her overseer, Orsay, dispatches the second through fifth strongest Claymores to deal with her. Claymores number two through five, Priscilla, Elena, Noel, and Sophia gather together before departing to kill Teresa. Teresa and Claire find lodgings in a village, where shortly after her pursuers find them. Priscilla engages Teresa in single combat, but she is outmatched despite briefly having Sorry, the upper hand. The other three Claymore pursuers decide that they must assist, and the members of the team begin to release their Yoki in preparation for the combined attack against Teresa. Teresa easily defeats the other Claymores, but spares their lives. Priscilla, incensed by her defeat, pursues Teresa and releases too much of her Yoki during the ensuing battle. She awakens, killing Teresa and her former comrades. Claire is left cradling Teresa's severed head. After Teresa's death, Claire brings her head to Rubel and asks to become a Claymore. Back in the present, Claire is assigned to a party that will be hunting an awakened being. After leaving Reiki behind at an inn, Claire departs on the mission with her comrades, Miria, Helen, and Deniv. Once they engage the awakened being, they are surprised to find that he is male and far stronger than they had expected. The battle against the male awakened being seems hopeless, despite Helen, Deniv, and Miria demonstrating use of their extraordinary skills. However, Claire refuses to give up, and uses her Yoki reading skill to dodge the enemy's attacks. Together with Miria, Claire attacks the awakened being and kills him. Throughout the entirety of the battle, Galatea, and I, for the organization, reads the Yoki of the four Claymores from a great distance and informs her overseer Ermita of the progression of the battle. As the four Claymores recover from their injuries, Miria suggests that the organization has purposely sent them on a suicide mission, since she discovers that they are all troublemakers who may have partially awakened. Deniv proves this theory by intentionally exceeding her limits in order to heal her wounds. To the Claymore's surprise, she does not awaken from the process. Miria warns the group to avoid top five Claymores, Alicia, Beth Galatea, Ophelia, and Raphaela. She advises the group to avoid fighting them due to their power. Claire is sent to engage another awakened being with another team. However, much to Claire's surprise, the team only consists of herself and Ophelia. To make matters worse, Ophelia's lust for blood and the threat of the awakened being places both Reiki's and Claire's lives in jeopardy. Claire fights Ophelia and loses her right arm as a result. Elena, who was presumed dead, saves Claire and severely injures Ophelia. Frustrated about the untimely demise of her brother at the hands of Priscilla and her defeat by Elena, Ophelia becomes enraged and awakens. Claire recuperates and Elena decides to teach Claire her flash sword technique. Shortly after Claire leaves, Elena is confronted by Raffaella. Elsewhere, aided by addition of Elena's right arm and the newly acquired flash sword technique, Claire fights Ophelia. During the battle, Ophelia finally realizes that she has awakened and becomes paralyzed with shock. Partially thanks to encouragement from remnants of Ophelia's humanity, Claire manages to defeat her. Unable to contact Claire for three months after Ophelia's awakening and death, the organization decides to send Galatea to track her down. In the meantime, Claire searches for Reiki, while disguised and with her energy suppressed, in a local town. She nearly runs into a party of Claymores on a hunt for an awakened being. The next day, a bloody and shredded Claymore limps into the town and tells Claire that the party was captured. She sets off to rescue them as, unbeknownst to her at this point, they are being tortured into awakening. Claire arrives at a cave inhabited by two awakened beings, the Abyssal One, known as Riffle of the West, and her lover and protector Dauf. In her confrontation with Dauf, Claire is rescued by Galatea. They come to learn of a secret arms race between the three Abyssal Ones of the North, West, and South and Riffle's intentions to raise as many awakened troops to join her side as she can before their inevitable confrontation. As Galatea buys time by distracting Dauf, Claire races to save Jean, the only Claymore capable of penetrating Dauf's heavy armor. Claire manages to bring Jean back from an awakened state, gaining her loyalty, and returns to help Galatea. Together, the battle shifts and Dauf is defeated, though Riffle saves his life. 
Claire finally lands a hit on Riffle and so she explains about the Northern Kingdom and the name of its ruler, Isley. Galatea returns to her mission objective to return Claire to the organization, but decides to abandon it. Rubel and Raphaela confront Claire and Jean, and Rubel gives Claire a mission to go to the Northern Lands along with 23 other Claymores to confront a horde of awakened beings and the Abyssal One Isley. He also mentions that Reiki has gone there, giving Claire even more incentive to go. Once there, Claire is reunited with Miria, Helen, and Denev. The 24 gathered Claymores divide into five teams and are soon confronted by three awakened beings. They literally strike first and attack them in the town of Pieta. The five teams defeat the three awakened beings. Some of them suffer serious wounds, but there are no casualties. Reiki is shown wandering in the ruins of a town already destroyed by Yoma, and meets a child like Priscilla. Priscilla takes a sudden liking to him, and Isley, Priscilla's caretaker, invites Reiki to go home with him and Priscilla. Reiki, who remains determined to protect Claire, persuades Isley to teach him swordsmanship. Meanwhile, Priscilla continues to express a seemingly innocent and peaceful liking for Reiki. Deniv confronts her captain, Undine, and the two reconcile by revealing their motivations for becoming Claymores. Flora, Claire's captain, distrusts Claire because of her borrowed arm, but accepts it after Claire reveals it came from Elena. Undine returns to her team and addresses them rather kindly, puzzling the other Claymores. In the distance, Isley orders his lieutenant, Rigaldo to bring along the full manpower of his awakened followers to annihilate Pieta. Claire and the rest of the Claymores prepare themselves for the next wave of awakened beings. Reiki, Isley and Priscilla head towards Pieta while the Claymores prepare themselves. The Claymores perform well against the onslaught of awakened beings, causing Rigaldo to enter the fray to prevent any more casualties. Displaying his power, he dispatches four of the five captains, killing Veronica, Undine, and Flora instantly, and dealing a blow through Jean's abdomen. Claire and the rest of the surviving Claymores continue their battle against Rigaldo. Meanwhile Reiki is comforting Priscilla, and Isley tells him the horror of her past. As Rigaldo begins to exclusively attack Miria, the other Claymores attempt to help, but are easily repelled by Rigaldo. Even Miria is quickly outmatched by Rigaldo, and as she is about to be slain, Rigaldo's arm is removed by a seemingly awakened Claire. As Reiki travels towards Pieta, Claire reveals that she only allowed her legs to awaken, granting her a massive increase in speed. However, her speed is uncontrollable, allowing Rigaldo to regain the upper hand in the battle. Rigaldo, excited at the prospect of a worthy opponent since his defeat at Isley's hands, releases his full power. Reiki arrives and witnesses the partially awakened Claire. Determined to avenge Jean's apparent death, Claire releases dangerous amounts of energy, and eventually slashes Rigaldo into pieces as Jean regains consciousness. Unable to return to her normal state, Claire requests that Helen decapitate her so she will not awaken, while Reiki takes refuge in an alleyway. Meanwhile, Priscilla recognizes Claire's energy, and believing her to be Teresa, has her memories return. Noting Priscilla's presence, Claire gives chase to Priscilla. Intrigued by the situation, Isley orders his forces to remain on the sidelines as he observes the situation. In response to the situation, the organization dispatches Galatea to examine the conflict in the north. The fight between Claire and Priscilla rages on inside of a volcano while Isley observes the battle. Priscilla, who does not realize that she is an awakened being, easily repels Claire, who she believes to be Teresa. Meanwhile, Jean and Reiki travel towards the battleground. As Claire is about to be killed by Priscilla, Miria, Helen, and Deniv save her. They manage to acquire an advantage, but Priscilla fully releases her power, as she had not fully awakened at that point. She effortlessly defeats the three Claymores. Determined to avenge Teresa, Claire fully releases her energy in an effort to defeat her. Claire, nearly fully awakened, continues the battle, but Priscilla still dominates the fight with apparent ease, until Claire, spurred by flashbacks of Teresa, finally hits her with multiple devastating attacks. Priscilla reverts to her human form and is about to be killed when Reiki intervenes, but Claire, unable to control herself, attacks him as well. 
Jean takes the blow instead and, although fatally wounded, manages to have Claire revert to her human form, leaving Claire tormented with grief for the death of her comrade. Priscilla is then retrieved by Isley. In the last scenes, Miria, Helen, Deniv, and Claire announce their wish to leave the organization and depart on separate journeys, with Helen traveling with Deniv and Reiki with Claire.